Can high altitude be a potential cause for GI symptoms? Find out on this next episode of Digest This. Welcome to Digest This, the show that helps you revolutionize your digestive health. Here are your hosts, Dr. Liz Cruz and Tina Nunziato. Hello and welcome to Digest This. I'm Dr. Liz Cruz and I've got Tina Nunziato sitting right here by my side. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are a first time listener, we welcome you with open arms and we and we're and we just want you to know how excited we are that you're here and please go check out our library of over 300 podcasts and if you are a regular listener thank you so much for your loyalty and for being on this journey with us we love you and we appreciate you and uh so what about that question it's a pretty good question yeah well so, how did it come up first of all you gotta tell everybody how it okay came up. so the um one of my very good friends who's also the administrator at one of the surgical centers I work at um, caught me yesterday and she's like, hey, can you guys podcast on high altitude and GI issues? And, and so she went on to tell me how when she and her husband have gone on some trips in their RV and go into, you know, a higher altitude than here in Phoenix, that she tends to get sick. And, uh, and so, you know, she just thought it would be a great topic. And I told her, absolutely. And, you know, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's going to be easy. Then I'm like looking stuff up on it. I'm like, wow, that's like a pretty serious a thing. thing. It, and, and, you know, there was quite a bit that I learned from doing a little, a little pre-podcasting research. So Tina did her own research too. We're going to just share with you guys some of the things that we found. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right. So first of all, I've got to get, and I'm going to, and I'm going to do a little bit of reading, um, from some of the things that I found. Okay. Off of my, off of my, um, laptop. By the, by the way, this is our 350th <clears throat> podcast. Woohoo! <laughs> 350th. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a big milestone. It is. It's a huge milestone. So, all right. So altitude sickness, which is what she was asking me to talk on. Altitude sickness is actually like an umbrella term. And under that, you have three different categories of uh, syndromes or whatever you want to call it. So acute mountain sickness is probably the most common thing that people encounter. All right. Um, and basically... Acute mountain sickness, AMS, calling it for short. Um, people typically will get um, headaches, feel fatigue, nausea, uh, diarrhea. Um, you know, they will, and, and typically once they start acclimating to that higher altitude, typically the symptoms will resolve like within 24 to 72 hours. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's AMS, acute mountain sickness, most common one. Then you have high altitude cerebral edema just reading that was <laughs> does scary not sound good. does not <laughs> sound good right and mm -hmm. basically if acute mountain sickness progresses um, it can turn into the high altitude cerebral edema that basically is fluid buildup in your brain and that is not good mm -hmm. um, and for that people will usually start experiencing dizziness headache blurred vision um, disorientation all right that's i mean that's that's not good um and you know and even though pre you know hydration is one of the most important ways of of preventing and treating it some people get severe forms of of this altitude sick of altitude sickness to the point where they can't even hydrate okay like if they're so nauseated nauseous. so nauseous like where they can't even hydrate mm -hmm. um and that's dangerous because this could be potentially fatal mm -hmm. Um, and so it definitely can become very life threatening, like within hours. Mm -hmm. All right. So really the only treatment for that is coming down <laughs> descent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you have high altitude pulmonary edema. All right. So the other one was cerebral edema, which is fluid buildup in the brain. Pulmonary edema is fluid buildup in the lungs. All right. And, you know, typically happens in higher elevations. Um, it can happen to anyone that's 
in an altitude of over 8,000 feet. Um, and even experienced athletes can experience this, can have this. So even though an experienced athlete has, has been preparing and they're trained, this can still happen even to them. Um, some of the mild symptoms would be like a, a dry cough, a little bit of shortness of breath, um, and uh, you know, with even mild exertion. And more severe types would be shortness of breath while you're resting, uh, confusion, fever. And again, the only way to alleviate this is coming down, descent. Um, oxygen and descent are life life saving and and absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, this was actually something new, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I thought it was fascinating. I even ran into a couple articles where they were talking about um, GI hemorrhage, gastrointestinal hemorrhage. Uh, they were talking about um, gastritis and perforation, and I was like, what? So I, I read a couple of them and they were interesting. I mean, some of them, one of the articles was talking about, and I believe it was like, it was a study with military um, people who, uh, like soldiers who had been at very high altitudes and, you know, like, like greater than 15,000. And because of the increased pressure in the lumen, in the, in the intestine, it actually, the pressure was so increase that it caused ischemia which is basically like lack of blood supply to that area and and as a result those people developed um perforation it's crazy yeah it's it is i mean and then they were talking about like um some of the studies in, were one of the studies was uh studies that have been done on some of the um people that live like in the andes like um in the peruvian you know peruvian people that that live in high altitude in the mountains um that also have gastrointestinal issues, which in the end they've attributed to just being at such high altitude. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I learned, I actually learned quite a bit. Great topic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great I'm topic. sure Shelly didn't mean all that. I think, I think she meant, <laughs> I go up North. Why do I get so sick? Okay. Right? So let's kind of bring it on down. I'll let you go ahead and, and you're so cute in <clears throat> all your research. Oh, this is very this interesting. Is fascinating. Yeah, this is very fascinating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and the fact that you didn't know about it, right? I mean, millions of people don't know about this stuff. Yeah. This is why we're talking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the research I did was pretty basic, you know, just what happens when we go up north or we go up to high altitudes. Mm -hmm. For us, it's up north, right, to Flagstaff and, and you know, people get nauseous. Right. You know, they get nauseous. They can get headaches, insomnia, um, restless. They can be restless. They might not be able to have good motor function that might be really tired mm -hmm. fatigued um, and the, the main reason is is that you're going from low to high altitude too quickly and your body doesn't have time to adjust to the change in oxygen and the pressure the air pressure levels so that's the main reason um, right. I mean obviously <clears throat> most people you know the best way to solve it is just let your body adjust mm -hmm. right rest drink a lot of water um, it's important to drink a lot more water when you go to high altitude because um, the higher you go, the less humid it is, the more right. dry. So you have to drink almost double the amount of water. So it is really important to drink a lot of water mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and rest and let your body adjust. Exactly. Right? Avoid That's, alcohol. Right. Limit your alcohol intake. Um, another thing that I thought was fascinating is eat more carbs. Mm -hmm. um, eat more carbs because it takes less oxygen to digest carbs than digestion of fats. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was, they said, you know, try not to ascend more than three to 500 meters um, per day, you know, so basically take your time. Right. You know, if you're on a hike or you're driving and you're, you're moving quickly through, try to take it day by day so you're not going too quickly, too fast. Um, try to rest in between days, you know, so again, it just gives your body time to adjust to mm -hmm. the, the difference in the air pressure. So yeah, it's just you know really interesting. You don't <clears throat> think about all those things when you when you go up north and you're nauseous, right? You know, right? And it, that you don't realize that there's less oxygen that you're able to breathe, and that the you know the air pressure is different. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. So great uh, again, great topic. I learned a lot. Um, I think I think we both learned a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, hopefully, we're able to share some some um, pearls with you if you know if you do traveling or go up somewhere where you're at a higher altitude, um, 
these are great great tips mm -hmm. again hydrate 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 um they say even when you fly absolutely so, like when, you're, absolutely. when you fly right like the cabin is pressurized so mm -hmm. you're not when you're going up in the cabin of the airplane you're not feeling that high altitude and that's why you know you're not going to get nauseous on an airplane for the most part but you're still experiencing that up and down and so they say when you travel on an airplane you should drink a ton of water as well just to avoid nausea and um and just feeling fatigued right um you know when you fly so same same concept so. eat the carbs and minimize alcohol intake mm -hmm. all right that will help yeah. yeah so awesome thank you for that topic shelly appreciate mm -hmm. it and uh, shout yeah. out to shelly that's right and, and seriously if, if if you have any topics that you want us to to talk about uh, send us an email at support, right? Yeah, support at drlizcruz.com. Yeah, support at drlizcruz.com. Send us an email and say, hey, I'd like to hear a little bit about this on your podcast. And uh, believe me, we will talk about it, mm -hmm. okay? We'll talk about it. So we'd love your, we'd love your ideas. And uh, we are very appreciative that you have joined us. If you want to connect with us, um, for you know if you're having any digestive issues and you want to connect and get and get in with you know maybe doing a, a consult with us like a wellness consult you found the right people okay and just got you just got to go to our website drlizcruz.com there's a little uh, magenta colored button on the home page that you can click and that will take you that will take you through the process of scheduling a 30 minute free wellness consult. Okay, that's right, you heard me right. Free wellness consult, all right? So this is our gift to you and it's over the phone so you don't have to even come into the office, all right? So it doesn't get any better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any better. And, and you can be anywhere. Anywhere. In the world. That's right. So that's, that's right. Cool part. That's right. If you're in Europe, no worries. Tino, mm -hmm. get up at one in the morning <laughs> and do the consult. Exactly. So, um, and also, if you um, have not rated us on this podcast, please rate us and give us a five because that'll actually help other people like you to find us. Um, and lastly, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please subscribe because we don't want you to miss an episode. No, no, no. So please subscribe. All right. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to go ahead and say good night or goodbye, and we will catch you on the next podcast. Thank you for joining Dr. Liz Cruz and Tina Nunziato. To learn more about their revolutionary products and services, go online to www.drlizcruz.com.